Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. We're going to try this again. I can't even access my, my last video myself, and some of you have messaged me that you cannot also. So we're going to give this a try again. Um, I, first of all, I want to start with this rapture vision that I have, and in it today, and in it, similar to others, there's a burst of white light and we are caught up. I'm caught up. It, have you ever been on an amusement ride that you feel like you're just, your stomach's coming out of you or you're being sucked up so quickly? I don't have human words to describe what that feeling was like. It was so fast. I, it's so suddenly. And I didn't see the Lord, but I know that he's there. And we are gathered together. And it is glorious. It is glorious. I believe many of us are having those experiences because Jesus is telling us that he is almost here for his bride. We are in the final moments of the end of days. So I want to encourage you with that because we're supposed to encourage each other with it. I also want to tell you as I was out today with my beautiful daughter Allie and her two sons, Peter and Ezekiel and my grandson Jaden, who is my boy, um, they all are. We um, at one point Allie took Peter and Jay with her, and it was just me and Zeke, and we were gonna catch up with them a little bit later. But Zeke and I, and I love when Pe it. I mean, at my age, it's really great when someone says, "Oh, your baby's so cute. What a good daddy you are." And I always say, "No, I'm the." That people don't know what Zadie means. So I tell them I'm the grandfather. And she, she said, well, I thought you looked too old to have a child that age. And I kind of laughed and she, she was so apologetic. She didn't need to be apologetic. I'm the grandfather. But it opened a door because she said, no, 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 no. Older men can have children too. And here's a clue. When you're in the hole, stop digging. But it was, it's all good because there's no offense. I'm, I'm at that age where I'm having grandchildren, and I am thankful for those grandchildren, but I, I find it humorous, and it was really sweet. Today, the Lord was able to use that to open a door of discussion, and so Allie was looking for Zeke and I, but we were spending a good amount of time sharing the truth of God's Word and the gospel of grace. And while she had, as a child been to church some she and she's recently been in search of because she believed in a higher power she's met with Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and others I shared the truth with her that we believe the Bible teaches in the eternally self-existing God in the persons of Father Son and Holy Spirit you know what I teach on this channel he left glory was born of a virgin wrapped in flesh lived a perfect life, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt, the ransom price for our sins. It was all sufficient. It was once for all. It was to pay the debt completely full, to tell us die, perfectly done once and for all for our past, present, and future sins. And we believe in the ABCs of salvation. I mean, I shared scriptures with her, like Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I, I shared the consequences of sin in Romans 6.23. I shared Romans 10.9 and 10. If we confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart man believes and is justified, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I shared Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Um, John three sixteen. you know the scriptures that we share. And you could see the moment. So she did the ABCs. A, admitted she was a sinner in need of a savior. B, believed on Jesus and his redemptive work on the cross at Calvary. She was placing her faith and trust in him. I could see it happening. The tears in her eyes, it was glorious when she believed. And see, she called on the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then, because she's an hour away, we were an hour away from where we live, 
I know a good church that believes Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. John 14, 6. Believes the Bible is, they believe in the verbal plenary inspiration of Scripture. It is God-breathed. And so uh, fully inspired, infallible, inerrant, it's God's Word. It's alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, and it shall not return into the Lord void. So that was just an amazing opportunity today as I went through the day thinking about my grandma. Thank you all for praying. My wife's grandma, but I consider her mine too. And just, you know, just thinking of her and smiling and just a glorious time. Brothers and sisters, we are living in a time, and this is a sign of the time, because in the, it talks about in the end time, we're going to be raptured out of here and there's going to be a great delusion. We're seeing that at work now. I, I find that as I'm out there and I'm sharing the the truth of God's word, the gospel of grace, people either reject the truth wholesale, they, they want nothing to do with it, or they um, they respond to it like this woman. In fact, in my own little community, now we're in the country, we're, we're in Amish country, and we're in a township, but the closest, you know, the address is Sullivan, Illinois. I think Sullivan has... The city limits has 4,400 people, so not, not a big city by any stretch. Um, there is an apostolic church, and they, the pastor puts signs out there. Well, I believe two of the signs that have gotten an uprising, and people on social media are just, they actually, they're, they're threatening to protest at his church. They're signing petitions. Now, let me tell you why. He had a sign that said, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. That's true. That's true. That's true. Now, I want to say this. We love everyone, but we will never call good, evil, and evil good. We will never call sin righteousness. I've already been... Well, you know. You know. Uh, you heard my daughter today. She was with me um, as we get calls over the death threats that I've gotten, and some very serious. I'm not worried. Praise God. To live is Christ, to die is gain. As a child of God, I can't lose. Hallelujah. And, and I certainly am not afraid. So, he also had one, I think, that said turn, meaning turn to Jesus, or burn. I, I'm not going to get into the theology of what he's putting out there, but the outrage... Everywhere you go, if you go, that's why our House of Representatives last week passed the HR5, which is the, LG, it's the Equality Act, which would extend the 1964 Civil Rights Act and really supports the LGBTQ agenda. Now, <clears throat> again, we love people. We don't love the sin, but we love people. And like anyone, I'm, listen, I encourage everyone, the ABCs, admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior, believe on the redemptive word of work of Christ on the cross at Calvary, and call on the name of the Lord. I don't care who you are. The time we're in, we want to share that gospel truth. Now, we know as believers that Ephesians 2.10 applies. I'm going to say 8 and 9, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. That way we can put it together. For we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. We, it's not about what we do. It's all about what Jesus did. For we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. We call it the free gift of salvation. Not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved by works. We are not kept saved by works. But we are saved for works. It goes on, on verse 10. For we are created in his workmanship unto good works. We were born again. The nanosecond you believed and called on his name, you were indwelt with Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you, believers. You have resurrection power and you praise God. Greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. And so that is truth. But we are created in his workmanship. We're, we're spiritually alive. We're born again. 
unto good works. So while we're not saved by works nor kept saved by works, we are saved for works. And the good works we do, the way we live our lives to honor him, no one's saying that after you're saved that you never repent, meaning that you are sorry and that you have a change of mind and that you turn direction, but you were still saved all along. That's the point. Nothing, you're, you're saved, you're saved. The nanosecond you believed and called on his name, you are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. You can't negate over 200 passages, 200 scriptures with a couple that you, that you think are contradictory and they're not. I've spent years, I've said this before, and no glory to me, all the glory to God. I've spent years studying the scriptures in the original language, and I do videos. I'm going to do more videos about that showing and properly exegeting and rightly dividing what they really mean. And I've done that on here, and still when I have, mockers and scoffers have come back. No, that's heresy. That's a lie. That's false. It's not. I'm showing from the word of God. Pray for them. The reality is faith plus nothing equals our salvation and eternal security. That's it. But our reasonable duty, and because we love him, because we love him and we know his grace, we want to serve him and live lives that bring glory and honor to our Lord, right? We want to do that. So, of course, we do. No one's saying that we don't. <clears throat> I do things that offend my wife. I'm still in covenant relationship with her. <laughs> She's, I'm still her husband. If I offend her, and I sin against her and against the Lord, if I sin and I offend her and I go about my day, I'm still her husband. But because of the fellowship I want with her, the intimacy, the closeness, I'm still her husband. I will say I'm sorry. I want to do that. So with the Lord, I do the same thing. I have never stopped being his child. I am never unsaved then. I am saved and sealed until the day of redemption. I have 70,000 thoughts a day. There are sins of commission and omission. Think about this. 70,000 thoughts today. Just my thought life alone. There is no way that I'm going to sit here and tell you that every thought was in line with the word of God. Nor that I didn't sin. The Apostle Paul told us. When I want to do, and he was saved and sealed until the day of redemption. He said, when I want to do good, evil is present. When I want to do evil, Holy Spirit. What does Holy Spirit do? He convicts us, not condemns us, the believers. He convicts us to righteousness because he loves us. And, and so I'm going to say it again. The nanosecond I believed, I was saved and sealed until the day of redemption. I don't maintain my salvation. I couldn't earn my salvation, nor can I maintain it. It's all about what Christ did. It's all about his precious blood. In the Old Testament, a foreshadowing of the Lamb of God, right? They would sacrifice the animals because the life was in the blood, and that atoned for the sins. Jesus was the Lamb of God who, who did the redemptive work on the cross of Calvary, Atoning for our sins once and for all. Praise God, brothers and sisters. That's grace. So we are saved through grace. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith in whom? In Jesus. That's it. Faith alone in Christ alone. And I know I keep stressing that because I'm concerned for many of you. If you place your faith and trust in his work on the cross plus your righteousness, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Apart from Christ, brothers and sisters, please study the scripture. If you put your, if you believe and you put your trust and your salvation in him and what you do thereafter, that's not faith in him alone and you are not saved. That's the truth. People don't want to hear that truth. Well, I wanted to make sure this message got out. I also want to tell you one more thing. Um, 
Oh, two more things. Sister Kathy, thank you. Thank you for that testimony. Brothers and sisters, we had someone. I have a prayer list here. It's updated. Harpazzokathy at gmail.com. That's for prayer requests. We pray. Well, we have a sister who had stage four cancer that had entered the lymph nodes. And we prayed. And she is completely, supernaturally, Holy Spirit, did it. She is healed. Hallelujah. Cancer is gone, completely gone. We serve an awesome God and we are prayers. So praise God for that. Also, also, yes, Crisis Pregnancy Campaign. This is my grandsons. We've been working on this. Thank you for those who give. Uh, there's a link that you can do that. Today, we were able to um, match up a teen, an older teen mom, because her baby's alive in her, in crisis pregnancy with a Christian family. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know that they'll ever get to receive that baby because Jesus could come before that. But we have to plan. We have to live our lives. So praise God for that. And there was something else. What was it that I was going to tell you? Oh, the intel that's coming in. Oh, brothers and sisters, the intel that's coming in, I can't share it right now. And there are times that I can't because of the sensitivity. And I don't want to share anything that could put our men and women who, who serve in danger and in harm's way or thwart The, what is it? Um, it's been a long day, but a good day. Thwart the job, I'm going to say that they're on. You'll know what I'm talking about. I don't want to thwart what they're doing. So, things are moving so quickly. Well, I want you to know God loves you fiercely and passionately. I plan to be on tomorrow. And deal with um, some of the scriptures that people are still sending, trying to debate that we are saved by grace through faith alone. So I'll be on here with those little mini Bible studies, and I want you to know something. God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Jesus is coming soon, and it's amazing what is awaiting us. Have an awesome rest of your day.